Hello, and welcome to Cry Havoc Wargaming, dedicated to bringing you the uncommon. For those of you who haven't met me, my name is Ron, and today we're going to do a battle report of the fourth and final mission of the Scorpion Lair campaign for Battle Force, Scorpion's Nest. So let's get started. So far, we have managed to chase the Red Scorpion uh, through Jahalabad. Uh, we have destroyed a barrel or captured a barrel of synthetic anthrax, but he has gotten away with one, and intelligence states that that is now in a compound outside the city. So the UN forces are going to invade that compound and try to destroy that final barrel of anthrax and hopefully to capture or eliminate the Red Scorpion. So let's go to the gaming table. Mission four, the Scorpion's Nest. November 1st, 2002, 1700 hours. The UN forces have utilized all their surveillance resources, managed to locate the compound acting as the Red Scorpion's base of operations. Though he has proven a slippery adversary, his identity has been digitally confirmed. It is time to bring the full force of the available UN personnel online and assault the compound. The Red Scorpion must be neutralized. Sit rep. The Red Scorpion's base of operations has been location. Any additional containers of anthrax, along with the majority of the trusted loyalists, are believed to be in this location. Helicopters have shuttled the UN forces to an area just outside the compound and the order to attack is received. For the setup of this game, the UN player has received one million dollars to construct a new battle force or to re reinforce or reorganize his existing battle force. You may recall that almost everybody, well not almost, everybody was wounded or killed in the last game. Uh, half of the team was, um, was killed, so I, I have reorganized. I've also brought in some uh, heavier weapons. I have a couple of underbarrel grenade launchers, and now I have two light machine guns uh, for the assault. We have caught one of the anthrax containers, so there's only one anthrax container still remaining, and we automatically get the initiative on the beginning of the game. We have spent 25,000 of our excess monies to buy a off-board fighter for a jet bomb attack. Once per game, the player may cover an area with a five-inch template and uh, hopefully destroy stuff. The terrorist player has received 1,250,000 to construct a new battle force or to reinforce or reorganize his old one. Of course, everybody in his unit was killed except for the Red Scorpion himself. They are required to have at least three teams, and the team members of those teams must be militia level. So I have three teams at militia level, but inside the compound itself, inside that building, uh, inside there is a cell, and the cell consists of um, a couple of operatives as well as corps. So those are his best soldiers, and they have also have a light machine gun. Uh, so they are in a slightly better condition and shape than they have been. Uh, there's also a ton of them. Increase that number. There are 15, 15 of the terrorists standing up against um, only nine UN. So, uh, but, but they're mostly militia, so they're, they're a little weaker. They do have demolitions hidden. I'm not supposed to know where they are, but I don't really know how to do that <laughs> I'm in a solo game. Uh, so I've gone ahead, maybe it wasn't a good idea, but I put them in the ga at the gate, thinking that if they lost the gate and it's hard to fall back, they might blow up the, the guys coming through the gate. Um, so that was the plan. I probably should also mention that the UN forces have come with a breaching charge. So uh, the forces are already deployed for the first turn. My uh, primary squad is here. You can probably barely see them in the shot because they're just barely on the camera right now. That's the group with the breaching squad. That is mostly my surviving members of before the experienced guys. And they're going to look profits carrying the breaching charge. And they're, they're going to look at uh, coming in through the gate, through the wall directly there. The second squad is coming in directly on the main road here as a diversionary force primarily to keep attention over there. Also possibly to stop the truck because that is the goal of this game. There is a van 
at the back of the board just there. That van is carrying the anthrax. It has to get across the board and off the table here. Uh, it's not clear to me when it's supposed to start doing that. So I am went ahead and I don't have people in it right now. I'm going to make drivers have to get to it and then start. I don't know if that was a requirement or if the game was supposed to start with them already in there. But um, I'm going to make them get a driver in there. So uh, that's where we start. The uh, UN has initiative, and I will come back when we're done. So we just did uh, the first turn of the game. The charge has been placed over here to blow, blow the gate. Uh, there's been a lot of shooting back and forth. There was a grenade fired, or an attempted grenade. Actually, he they, they was taken out before he could fire his grenade and ran back. He's, uh, the, the man with the grenade launcher was wounded and suppressed. But things have been nasty here. Uh, a return grenade from our grenade launcher killed one of their door guards immediately, uh, severely wounded another. In fact, uh, things are going badly for the door guards. But things aren't going great for our uh, second, uh, second squad here either. Uh, we have a severe wound. Two of our new guys have, uh, have been wounded on already. So things are going a little rough out here as well. Taliban have all taken good firing positions. There was a, a severe injury done to one of the uh, operatives inside, so that's good. Uh, but the others are coming out the side and they're moving t towards the van. And that is not particularly good for our side. The van right now is right here, just behind the structure. Uh, and you can see that there's people coming out of the building there, including the Red Scorpion in the doorway, heading towards that van. I'm not going to put them all in them. They never did assess. We did. That's going to give us a huge play. And we rolled a six. Yeah, they're not going to be able to beat that. And they didn't. They rolled a one. So the initiative for turn two stays with the UN, and I'll be back at the end of this turn. I'm not convinced we're ever going to make it to uh, turn four. Turn two has gone very, very poorly. The entire squad coming down the front here, save one man, has been completely destroyed. Breach of the wall has occurred though, and we're coming in strong there. There's a man in the van, and another, and Red Scorpion's about to get in. So things are going, uh, going poorly for our side as we go into turn three. We roll for initiative, we uh, assess, they did not. Um, and we have initiative for turn three. So that's the end of turn three. Things have just changed for the UN's sake dramatically. The flank uh, here, we were coming through pretty well. We got, took a wound um, to uh, Reese. Uh, has been wounded again and suppressed and fell back. Dallas, the machine gunner, has also fallen back. Uh, he was shot at. He fell, was suppressed. He wasn't uh, injured. The, the most remarkable thing, actually, we should probably go back to the beginning of the turn. So on the reaction phase, um, Captain Reese called in a jet bomb uh, attack on the van. At the time, the van had been right in here. He hit the van. He killed the two surviving men that were standing from the, the gate guard. Uh, he wounded both the people, the, the Red Scorpion and the driver of the van. The van escaped unharmed from this uh, bombing. However, in the combat phase, after getting through the gate and coming out uh, to here, where they, well, they were on the road at the time, they were fired upon by the hero of the day, who is Jason Whitehead. Jason Whitehead, the last remaining survivor of the... Um, of the second squad just here. He fired at the driver, hit the driver, killed him. The, the vehicle went out of control, hit that um, Jersey barricade there, and in hitting the barricade, that did uh, it does a green card to anyone in the vehicle, and the Red Scorpion was killed. Right now, as we go into turn four, and turn three comes to a conclusion, only halfway through the game, the van is a good part of the way off the board, but it is also empty. There's nobody in it uh, save the, the barrel of uh, anthrax. It's not impossible for the Taliban to get out there and get it, but, and they certainly still have us outnumbered. Uh, but uh, that was a, com a complete game changer, I think, and really ends up helping out the uh, UN forces. So here we are at the end of turn four. This has been a, a pretty important turn all the way around. We've been exchanging gunfire over here. A uh, grenade 
landed down here. It took out crews. The Taliban had started to put, come forward towards the van through the main gate. Over here, the hero of this particular battle, the very fact he's still alive is amazing, Jason Whitehead managed to throw a grenade into the van carrying the anthrax, destroying it. Uh, so the van is now uh, stopped and destroyed. Uh, so is the anthrax in it. We are pretty beat up. We lost crews that turn. We have um, Reese is wounded again. Um, poor Jason Whitehead is out there all alone. In fact, at present, we have one, two, I only have four of my uh, UN forces still alive, and one of them is wounded. Uh, things are pretty rough going for the uh, enemy as well. There's a gentleman with a light machine gun here, one of the uh, new, new uh, uh, squad who's holding this. He's actually in cover. I put him out there so I can see him better. But he's actually in the doorway. He's controlling this area here. There was a um, machine gun uh, shot by Whitehead up here, which uh, killed one of them and severely wounded the second in command. Um, so they're wounded, but they're still in place up there. And uh, nobody has assessed that turn. We were far too busy to assess. Wow. And for the first turn of the game, which will give them a point, the Taliban take the initiative. So with the Taliban having initiative, we go into turn five. So that brings us to the end of turn five. Uh, that was a very short turn. That's kind of what happens in the game. Turns get shorter. Uh, Jason Whitehead has pretty much gotten out of the fight, gotten to safety. The rest of us are just trying to hold on here. These should come off. Dallas was hit in the open. He is bleeding out. So he's going to need a uh, first aid roll this turn. Well, he actually has two turns to get it, but Reese Wade has gone prone and managed to resist some firing. He did take out their light machine gunner, the only light machine gunner they had. Not much successful firing on that turn. Uh, nobody is assessed again. Uh, we roll a six. They roll a six, but we have a plus five to their plus two. So the UN has initiative as we go into turn six. The UN just has to survive a couple more turns right now. All right, so we've come to the end of turn six. The shots have been exchanged. Not much happened originally. The grenade launcher for the Taliban fired two grenades. The first grenade overshot the board and left, uh, left the table. Prophet managed to do a uh, medical roll on Dallas, which has stopped his bleeding. A second shot by, from the grenade uh, launcher onto Reese Wade killed him. Uh, so Reese Wade has been killed. Um, he was in a pretty haphazard position there. I'm not horribly surprised. Uh, we go to turn seven. Just two more turns left of the game. All the UN has to do is survive. At the UN, I rolled a two. They have assessed. That would have given them... Uh, uh, four, five, six. They not only have a five. I don't know how the loss of the killer, uh, the commander, affected that. So uh, I believe the UN still has initiative. They're sort of out of line with smite. I do not have smoke grenades where I need them. They just need to stay alive uh, for two more turns. That could be a problem. And we go into turn seven. So uh, end of turn seven. Um, the UN, the, the two that are still here on the table. Uh, not including Dallas, he's off of hiding in the extreme. Um, I'm afraid to bring him too close to the action right now. The two uh, here are just waiting to the end of the turn, waiting for their extraction to come. They just have to hold on for another turn. They've made it through this turn. Prophet has uh, been fired upon. Um, he has launched a smoke grenade. Uh, he has also managed to take out the grenade launcher. Uh, he is out of line of sight of all the other uh, Taliban right now. Uh, and, um, and that's the end of that turn. So we roll for uh, initiative. They've assessed, and they've rolled, ooh, they have 12. Uh, we would have 11, except I think we're probably down. Well, we lost anyway, but I think we would have been down for the loss of Reese. So I'm gonna say they've got the initiative this turn. As we go into turn eight, the final turn of the game, just gotta stay alive for a couple more phases. So that brings us to the end of the last turn of the game. Only one solid threat, which was uh, an approaching Taliban fellow coming up behind the smoke. He was taken out by Prophet. 
Most of the people are out of line of sight of each other now, or dead, and we come to the end of turn eight, and however they're being extracted, I guess a helicopter comes and gets the surviving three members of the UN, and they get out of here. And so the game ends. Uh, this is a victory, um, even though very, very bloody, it is still a victory for the UN. Another very bloody game. Unlike some of the other modern games I've played, this game is pretty equal in its danger level, uh, and even more so in a, in a scenario like this one, or a mission like this one, where we had a squad of more equal terrorists. That one squad that I had added, uh, there were a number of um, operatives in it, and the others were core trained. Uh, they also had some better weapons, a light machine gun, a, uh, another assault rifle, and not just the submachine guns, which gave them a real advantage. But still, in the end, uh, all but one of the terrorists were killed or will be dead at the end of the turn. There were two left that with severe wounds that didn't receive medical care, so they die at the end of the game. And there are three surviving UN soldiers. So again, another really dangerous fight for our UN uh, operatives. But they were successful. Uh, in the end, they received 12 points to the four points gained by the Taliban, making them the victors of this scenario. In the overall campaign, I'm missing the details of the very first fight. I could go back and watch the video, but I haven't. Uh, but even without the points of how many surviving troops the UN may have had in that first fight, even without those pluses, the, uh, it is still an amount of 24 for the UN to 11 points overall for the Taliban. So it is still a victory even without adding that up for the UN forces. In this uh, fight, of course, they've managed to kill the Red Scorpion. They lost their own co commander, uh, who has made it through most of the game. He'd been wounded before, but he's made it through all of the other uh, missions, and that's um, uh, Captain Reese Wade, who gave his life. So that was Battle Force uh, and the campaign for it, the Scorpion's Lair campaign. Really a lot of fun. A little beer and pretzely at times, but uh, a lot of fun. Really enjoy the solo cards. I, they really add a lot, and particularly in the uh, third mission where the sniper showed up. So um, it's, it's very enjoyable. I've played it now with uh, one of my club members. He enjoyed it as well. We did uh, the World War II version, which is only slightly different. Enjoyable game. Enjoyable game. I've enjoyed doing this scenario, and I look forward to playing some of the uh, the second campaign that's out, the Normandy campaign for the World War II. Uh, look forward to doing some of that in the future. If you've um, played this game yourself and enjoy it or are interested in it or have any questions you'd like to ask, go ahead and put those in the comments down below. We also ask if you have any idea for further content you'd like to see here on Cry Havoc Wargaming, go ahead and put that down in the comments as well. If you've enjoyed the video and found it useful or, or interesting, please hit like. And if you'd like to continue to receive notifications of further videos like this one that'll help you decide how better to spend your money and time in your wargaming hobby, then please subscribe. Until next time, cheers.